This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Sierra Nuevo in Forza Horizon 5's Rally Adventure DLC Pack Expansion 2, the second DLC pack for Forza Horizon 5. Uh, of course, we are driving all through this brand new Mexican map here, and I would like to say it looks beautiful, but that's like the rest of the map, and it looks unfortunately fairly similar to a lot of the rest of the map as well. I mean, yes, you've got some of these brand new things, construction objects in the way, I guess, and some new roads that we haven't yet explored. But it is very much so kind of like that sandy palm jungle area once again that we've already been through. So, if anything else, we've got some new rally events. And I had started playing Forza in Forza Horizon 4 after I picked up Forza Motorsport 7. So, I didn't really experience the DLC pack for the original Forza Horizon, which was the uh, their version of the Rally Adventure. So this is, even though it's not technically a remake, it's like a, a readaption, like a brand new Rally Adventure DLC pack for Forza Horizon 5. So we're going to see how this stacks up. And already it seems pretty interesting. You know, I had seen in a lot of the trailers i think we'll see in a moment here that we'll actually start getting some guides as to hey you know sharp right sharp left you know that kind of fun stuff so i'm pretty excited okay we got this hairpin up here oh this car is very very twitchy here medium right over here we got the helicopter camera all up there and just a jump oh boy <laughs> uh this could be a problem up into six gear going downhill over a river is that nope oh this is not great this is not great so first and foremost i tried for about 45 minutes attempting to get my wheelbase set up with all the correct drivers uh to get that all set up and ready to go and I had at one point gotten the Fanatec CSL DD to work with Forza Horizon 5. Since then, I had sold it and then in return purchased the Fanatec GT DDD Pro. GT DD Pro, there we are. And that was uh, mainly for Gran Turismo 7. And I did make sure that it is compatible with PC, so it should have been compatible with uh, Forza. I think at some point I may have gotten it to work, but I think just the fact that this new update might have bricked some wheel support because since then I haven't gotten absolutely anything out of this. No matter any of the drivers they have tried updating, any of the settings, anything there, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that to work, so I do apologize for that uh, ahead of time here because I would have absolutely loved to put on the foot cam and just see how much of an Irish jig dancer I would be trying to do this right here. I, I imagine that this would actually be really good fun with a wheel, but uh, in the meantime, we'll just do it on controller and that's honestly fine with me. So go over here behind this Audi Quattro, seeing our drone show in the background. I don't believe that we have to get first place here, but oh, we got the absolute horrible snap there. And we're almost here. And over the line? Across the line we go into Forza Horizon 5's Rally Adventure title screen. Perfect. First map down, or first race down of the expansion. Uh, second race here. I was going to say, I took a quick little drive kind of over some hills to get to this uh, event here. And I'll be quite honest, the one thing that I was about to say is that even though this looks 
fairly similar to a lot of the other uh, topography and just general environment to what we've already seen in uh, Mexico that uh, we've seen so far in the base version of Forza Horizon 5. The thing that I actually do enjoy about this is there actually is, first of all, because it's a new map, it's something we haven't experienced before, and it's been six months or whatever since the Hot Wheels uh, expansion, if not more. So being able to experience something new on the Forts map, something that we haven't explored or seen before, even though, like I said, it seems like it's pretty similar in style, environmentally speaking, it's it's really nice to be able to see something new and be like, wow, this is kind of neat. I haven't seen these types of hills before, and it's kind of cool how they, like, I don't know, drop so suddenly. On the way over here, when I was going up over a hill, it, like, went steep down into a valley and came right back up. And, man, is, is this kind of a sweet area. But uh, going back to the racing at hand, I am nowhere close to supposed to be at the time that I'm at. I mean, I can't figure out this car's gear ratios. Again, much like with rallying in general and drifting in general, um, I'm still using a very GT3 asphalt racing kind of mindset where it's when I hit the rev limiter, I shift up. But when you're drifting all over the place and you have like very little traction underneath you, your car is always hitting the rev limiter. So it's trying to figure out what's actually needing to be shifted up into the next gear and what's just like oh i'm just drifting around a corner so that will be that'll need to be taking getting some getting used to per se i think we're going fast enough we should be able to switch into a different gear but i guess the hills make it slower so I, I don't know. So about 75% of the way complete. We are still somehow in first place. I'm going to shift back down into third gear here. Because fourth gear seems a little bit on the high side where it just our uh, RPMs are way too low in fourth gear. And with all the hills going on here, yeah, it's it's this car does not have the power that I would like it to have to be able to make it up those hills. So I think third gear for the most part here is going to be the way to go. This seems pretty tight of a corner. Yeah, second gear might have been still a little bit low. So yeah, third gear is kind of the way to go by the likes of it here. So going around here, medium left. Kick it out a little bit. Not really that great of a drift. That's okay. And across the line in second, probably. Eww. Obviously, that was not a great run. Yeah, two seconds down. Oh, <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Not great. Ah, the infamous Audi Quattro from the glorious Group B rallying days of the 1980s. Ah, I am scared. <laughs> it's raining. It's on some asphalt. It's in a class of cars that was notoriously lethal to both drivers and uh, I don't know just anybody involved oh wow did that just absolutely kick out <laughs> somehow we are in third place which is like 10 places better than I thought we were going to be doing but that's alright oh that was quite a tight hairpin there. Oh, This car has got some serious oversteer. And not only when you get some oversteer, it just kind of keeps on going. So, yeah. Oh. Nope. Kind of went over that crest there and threw the car in the other direction. Thankfully, these walls are uh, sturdy enough. That they're not going to buckle out of the way into our uh, supporters here. I say supporters, but people that are just witnessing this tra tragedy of a race here. 
All right, 75% complete. We've got a an easy left. I don't believe that for a second here, so I'm already on the brakes trying to push this out. Perfect. That was a really good drift. Little bit of a tap at the end and over the line, and my goodness. So even though I'm absolutely atrocious at it, it's still kind of fun because... When it comes to rallying in general, it's like using a lot of drifting where obviously you want to try to connect your corners one from no, one to the next to the next to the next. And yeah, that's when you get a good set of corners going, it's really, really satisfying. And it's just something you can't even think about getting with uh, GT3 cars because they're so grippy. And if you have any oversteer, any drifting, you know, you are shredding the tires and it's just... You're going to be losing performance on every lap going forward because you need that grip.